Sério? The tank I bring to you today is another five and a half gallon. This is kept as a permanent species only tank and contains the world's smallest catfish, my breeder colony of Corydora pygmaeus, also known as the pygmy Corydoras. These little ones are a fascinating species, preferring to swim freely mid-column, only growing to roughly an inch in size, and prolifically breeding in a community setting. The only other intentional inhabitants are orange neos, whose purpose is to groom and clean the pygmy eggs. Because this is a breeding colony, I have planted it to the pygmy spawning behavior and fry protection. Although the pygmies are excellent community breeders, they will still eat a freshly hatched fry on occasion. With that in mind, I have utilized low-growing, bushy, dense plants. They are also favorites for the adults to adhere their eggs to. Let's get a closer look at some of these plants. The first plant on the left is a large carpet of Hydrocaudal Tripartita Japan. It is attached to a cocoa fiber base and has attached itself to the substrate. It is beginning to spread out, which makes me so happy. For the longest time, I was great at killing this plant. Drove me crazy because this is my favorite plant. But one day at my local LFS, which is Ace Hardware, I spotted this lovely mat in one of the tanks and it had to come home with me. It has quadrupled in size since then. The lesson I learned there was if you are struggling with a plant, try sourcing it locally. I don't trim this mat. When it starts to get some volume, I gently push it down. The denser, the better for fry protection. The plant to the left is a piece of driftwood covered with self-attached Swasser tank. The mother sus was originally sent to me by Mary Page Flynn four years ago. This plant feature is used more as cover for the adults. The whole crew of 22 strong can occasionally be found resting together in the path underneath. Behind the Siswasser Tang is an awakening Madagascar lace plant from Ace Hardware as well. This plant will extend massive leaves that will fill the entire upper column of the tank. Some may not agree with me for keeping a Madagascar lace in a 5.5, but it's ultimately about the happiness of the inhabitants. The pygmies enjoy the leaves for their protection from above the little hammocks they make among them to rest on, and for more spawning media. The Madagascar lace is a seasonal plant, so they only get to enjoy it for a limited time. Next to the Saswasertang log is an awakening red tiger lotus. This will serve the purpose of more planking pygmy space. I believe this little guy came from KGE last year, but I accidentally lost it in a tank for a few months, so it is restarting its growth. In the foreground, I have Crypt Marsalea beginning to carpet. I love this little leafed plant. The mother piece was sent to me by Kelly Foreman. Thank you for introducing me to this plant, Kelly. The purpose this crypt will serve is to provide additional cover for the newly hatched fry while they are learning to feed. The parents don't really like to go below the Marsalea, so I think it'll serve this purpose well. In the back right corner, I have a little forest of Alternanthera renickii. That is really hard to say. This began as a tissue culture gifted to me by Fission Tank Dicks almost a year ago. Thank you so much for this plant, Fission. It has been an almost painfully slow growing plant. Initially, I floated the baby stems until they developed elongated root structures. I then planted them in the substrate and prayed the pygmies wouldn't wiggle them free. It took many months for them to adjust, but they are finally starting to really fill in. The pygmy adults love to rest on the leaves, 
the bigger fry have made a fort underneath, dashing back and forth. And if you look long enough, you'll catch fry frolicking amongst the leaves. This is where they build size and then courage to join the colony for the first time. All of these plants are in 200 TDS, more GH than KH, low to mid light, and non-CO2, about 75 degrees. There is some hair algae, but that's from heavy feeding. Baby's gotta eat. I have tried many different plants with the pygmies, but they seem happiest with this arrangement. When they are happy, babies appear. You can see eggs everywhere. They even appreciated the hair algae. I hope you enjoyed the 8th tank in the 12 tanks of Fishmas series. We'll see you tomorrow with Miss Dee Dee's next selection. Love you all.